So, um, one of my favorite record covers of all time comes from the band Golden Dawn Orchestra. Um, this is their first EP that they released maybe, I don't know, eight, eight nine years ago, I guess. Um, this is a wonderful jazz funk group um, that is well known for their somewhat hilarious and often uh, extravagant uh, concerts. Um, they certainly feel like uh, marching in the tradition of uh, Sun Ra and most certainly George Clinton. And this is where their musical philosophy com comes from. Uh, it's very funky, very danceable. It is not shy to include elements of disco in their music. But overall it is, a, for me, a jazz funk album or jazz funk EP. Um, with a lot of uh, psychedelic moments and a lot of, kind of jazzy brass moments uh, and overall wonderful this is a great record and uh, I just wish their records would be a little more available in Europe it's kind of difficult to to buy them here um, so um, I'm always uh, looking out for those um, because most of them seem to be sold in the United States which is kind of strange because uh, they have toured quite a lot in Europe, particularly in Germany, and uh, took part in all kinds of festivals. Anyway, um, kind of goes well together as far as uh, the cover is concerned. Ashra Temple, their first album. Um, very different sound, but um, I don't know, kind of complementary covers in some weird way. I like both of them. Um, yeah, this was a this was a very uh, iconic cover design back in the day, of course, um, quite popular. Um, this is one of those strange uh, reissues that came out in uh, the last year, so it's not a it's not the best pressing. On the other hand, uh, it's also not the best recording. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I guess if one would be a connoisseur that is really deeply into this type of sound, then uh, it's probably advisable right now to get the CD remastered version. It's not a bad idea, actually. I mean, it's a fascinating album with a lot of history. Uh, the A side and the B side, it's all just one track, one crazy narcotic jam and uh, they're also very different to each other so the A side is this uh, violent loud noisy guitar orgy mostly carried forward by Manuel Göttingen while the B side is kind of the, 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 the proto ambient side the atmospheric side so to tell the truth I hardly ever listen to this album all the way through it's more like I decide which side I want to hear just based on my own mood so if you kind of if I feel like more in, in an ambient vibe then I play only the B side I mean the A side is a little harsher to swallow I mean in some parts it reminds me almost of industrial music and uh, but brilliant just brilliant just interesting to see just three guys just uh, having a blast and just uh, completely killing it um, and uh, this came out I think 1970 originally and I mean that's well actually 71 March 71 so um, this is uh, I was born in March 71 must have fascinated people back in the day and shocked other people and for many people this was probably completely unlistenable uh, while others thought it's a revelation so yeah famous stuff um do i have something else here let's have a look at this record because this really is fascinating so this is a prelusion by patrice russian um it's an incredible album recorded by a i think she was 18 at this point in time 17 or 18 years old uh, this came out in 1974 and was her first album of course patrice russian great keyboarder great pianist was to become uh, an outstanding kind of jazz funk soul artist uh, playing on tons of records i even have her playing on uh, one of my favorite albums by masayoshi takanaka um but her first record is pure fusion and pure jazz a lot of uh, post bop and uh, modal jazz and uh, she recorded this album with uh, joe henderson with uh, Nadubu Chancellor, it's incredible. I mean, 
it's shocking. It's shocking that a girl of this age would record something like that. It's fantastic and um, just make, makes me think what I was doing when I was her age on this album. Basically nothing useful. Nothing. Only wasting every day of my life. And she knocked out this record. Holy shit. But also fascinating how it seemed like she completely got it out of her system. Because uh, from now on her music sounded very different. So um, fascinating. This is a reissue uh, in a really, really good pressing. I have two more records here. And then uh, I can stop and upload it. I was listening to Bewitched by Andy Summers and Robert Fripp. This was their second collaboration. Um, I Advanced Mask, their first album, was always very fascinating to me as this highly original mixture of uh, ambient music and experimental guitar music and uh, this encounter of these two guitar luminaries. But they recorded another album together only a few years later. Uh, that to some extent follows uh, those ideas and those trends, but um, I feel like this record here is a little more funkier. They have Sarah Lee on bass here, so it sounds overall it sounds much more uh, in the direction of jazz funk. So while talking about black t-shirts and and a lot of hair on camera, this is one of the reasons. A highly annoying little cat that just can't go away. Even when asked to. Yeah, what can you do? What can you do? Just look at this. So I have one more record here to show you. And that was a... I didn't know this album and it was quite a surprise to me. And it was a positive surprise. This is an album called Clear Air Turbulence by the Ian Gillen Band. Now, I was, I was thinking that uh, Ian Gillen's solo material would be some kind of uh, high energy... Uh, hard rock stuff but uh, to my surprise this is funky as hell it even has strong leanings towards jazz fusion um, it has moments that are more like prog rock actually it's a brilliant album great fun to listen to this this is actually um, probably pretty underrated I find um, and uh, I just liked it from beginning to the end and um, this is certainly an album I will listen again and uh, many more times, probably. So um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I would not like everything that Ian Gillen has recorded as a solo artist or band leader. But this is really good. With uh, Chris Foss cover design, easily recognizable. Um, and um, rather nice inner sleeve. I mean, I usually don't like generic sleeves. But since this came out on Island... Um, they often had these nice images um, and this one is rather cute isn't it so um, that's it that's it for now and um, I hope you've liked this and uh, now I have to somehow take care of this cat and deal with it somehow do you think they go well with garlic and maybe a little some onion throw into a frying pan a little bit cat. What do you think about that? Let's talk about this. <laughs>